we see here the periodic table or chart representing or organizing all the chemical elements. And so what we see here is a grouping of all these elements. And if you haven't watched the video on atoms yet, this would be a great time to go and watch that one first because this will probably be easier for you to understand if you've watched that one. But each one of these elements is unique and has different properties than any of the others. They're all made up of something called atoms. And what is an atom? Well, an atom is essentially the smallest piece that you can divide one of these elements down to so that it still has the characteristics and properties of that element. So for example, we could take carbon here and you could break carbon into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until you finally got down to one atom of carbon and you can't simplify that any smaller and it still be carbon at that point. Now an atom of carbon is going to be a, a very different than an atom of nitrogen or of copper or any other of these elements, but they're all made up of atoms. And everything that is, that is in the world today, all the matter that exists, is made up of some kind of combination of these elements. So some of them are very simple. For example, the oxygen that's in the air that you breathe that all your cells need in order to stay healthy and thriving, that gas is made simply only of two atoms of oxygen. So that molecule is made up purely of one element. But water, however, we know is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. And if you look, if you could take your body and you could measure the, um, by mass, what, what your body is mostly made of, then the top four elements that are found in your body are in fact hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. So by mass, those would be the ones that you would find the most um, in a human body. Now, let's um, just get rid of some of this real quick. And I wanna take a closer look at one, let's just choose one element in this periodic table, and I'm gonna choose lithium. And let's look at the information that we find within each of these squares of the periodic table. So the first thing I wanna point out is it's got the name of the element written there. And for every name, there's also gonna be an atomic symbol represented either by a capital letter or a capital letter with a lowercase letter. So many times it's the first two letters of, of the element, but sometimes you have some strange ones that don't seem to make sense, like sodium Na or silver Ag. So some of that has to do with history of Latin being used and some, some things that don't seem to be obvious as why they were chosen as the atomic symbol. Now the other thing that's important to note in each of these is the presence of two numbers. So in the case of lithium, we have the number three, and then we have the number 6.941. So the number three is what we're gonna call the atomic number. And, and if you'll notice, that number for each of the elements is going in order. So we're starting with hydrogen, its atomic number is number one, and then we move over, helium is number two, lithium is three, and so on and forth, so forth, and they're arranged that way in order by atomic number. So what should I know about atomic number? What does that mean? So if you'll recall from the atom video, every atom is made up of three particles or subatomic particles. The proton, which is positively charged, the neutron, which is neutral, and the electron, which is negatively charged. And this atomic number happens to also indicate how many protons there are in an atom of that element. So with lithium having three for the atomic number, that means every atom of lithium is going to have three protons. If it doesn't have three protons, then it's not lithium. If it has two protons, it's helium. If it has four protons, it's beryllium. Now what, what does the other number mean? This number down here is the atomic mass. So this is 
including how many protons there are in an atom of lithium, but it also is including how many neutrons there are. So I want you to notice that it, it is a number with several decimals, 6.941. So we're probably going to round that when we use it to oh, the nearest whole number, 7. And the reason that we're doing that, the atomic mass is an average. If you took every atom of lithium that exists on Earth, and you average their masses together, 6.941 would be the average. So some of them might have um, a mass of 7, and others might have a mass of 6. And when you, when you average all of those together, you see the proportion is 6.941. That's what the average comes out to be. Um, now, I'm going to clear this off. So we have a little... Um, clear screen so we can look at some other interesting things about the periodic table. So after just recognizing what we need to know in each of these boxes, there's also some information that we can use uh, globally looking at the whole periodic table. So first what we see is we can look at these um, in columns. We can sort of organize these in columns or groups. So going up and down, so there's a first column, and there's a second column, and we can number these. So one way to number them would be start with one and two, and just go across in order, and you would end up over here, or this last group, with the number 18. So that's one way that you can group those. Um, but one way that I, I like better, even, is actually sort of an older way where you would name them 1A, 2A, and we're going to skip this portion in the middle and we're going to call these transition metals. So more to come on those in another video. 3A, 4A, 5A, and many times these are represented with Roman numerals. I'm doing it this way simply because it's easier for me to write it this way. And 8A. And, and why is that important? That's important because later on when we start to talk about bonding, and by bonding I just mean how do these different elements, how do atoms of these different elements combine to make molecules, how can we predict what's going to bond with what, then it's very important to know how, how many valence electrons there are. So valence just means how many are in the outermost shell, the outermost energy shell. And these valence electrons essentially say, what is this atom of this element going to bond to? What is it likely to bond to? How is it going to behave? And so because it has a lot to do with how it's going to behave and how it's going to bond, then that means that this column right here, starting with hydrogen all the way down to francium, all of these only have one electron in their valence shells. So they have that in common. They have one electron in the valence shell, meaning they're going to have similar behavior in some ways because they, they share the fact that they have that one electron. So the next group, 2A, they have two electrons in their valence shell, and so on and so forth, three, four, five. And this last column, eight electrons in the valence shell. And as you'll see, whoops, excuse me, later when you um, look at bonding, you'll find out that these are very unreactive. They don't want to react with anything. They're completely happy and they're, they're really not likely to be very reactive at all. Okay, um, And they're sometimes called inert gases. Inert meaning they really don't want to do much. Okay, so that is looking at the periodic table by groups, so columns. And we can say that behavior is going to be similar in those groups because of the, the similarity in their valence electrons. Now, the other interesting piece of information is we can also look at them in, by periods. So, meaning um, that going across the row, this would be the first period. And this would be the second period, and this would be the third period. And the reason that, that that's important is these periods have to do with an energy shell where the electrons are found. So as you go down the periodic table, 
you, you go up in the number of energy shells because we have more electrons um, simply there. Uh, so tune in next time and we'll talk about bonding and we'll move on. And thanks so much for joining in.